Hey Pokemon fans, it's time for some more Pokemon facts and trivia! I know, it's been forever since the last episode. Let me just say that the last episode was supposed to be the finale, but due to the high demand for the series to return, I decided to brush the dust off the series and go hunting for some new facts. Finding new facts has gotten a little bit harder since I've covered over a hundred of them so far, but I think you guys will like these. So who knows, we could have two more episodes of this or 200 more episodes. Facts might be limited, but we'll do our best with what we got. Time for Pokemon Facts and Trivia, episode 21. Fact number one, Ampharos. Ampharos' English name is a combination of Amp and Pharos, the Greek word for lighthouse. So it's no coincidence that Jasmine has one of these things lighting the lighthouse in Olivine City. Ampharos and its evolutionary relatives are based on the science fiction novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, published in 1968. In addition, Ampharos' Japanese name, Denru, literally means electric dragon, the typing of its mega evolution. Perhaps adding a dragon typing was actually considered as far back as Generation 2. Mega Ampharos' design reflects this as its mane and slender body draw similarities between it and the Chinese dragon. Fact number 2, Zangoose. Despite the fact that Zangoose and Sviper are said to be mortal enemies, they can actually breed if put in the same daycare. And even though Zangoose and Sviper have often shown to be equally matched, Zangoose does have an advantage on Sviper. Sviper is one of the toughest Pokemon to level up, while Zangoose is one of the easiest. Zangoose only requires 400,000 EXP points to reach level 100, while Sviper needs over four times as much to reach level 100. Zangoose is based on a mongoose, obviously, an animal known for hunting and killing venomous snakes such as Sviper. Mongooses are also immune to snake venom, explaining Zangoose's two abilities, immunity and toxic boost. Fact number three, Dragon Spiral Tower. The background music that plays in Dragon Spiral Tower is actually a combination of two other Nintendo themes, Mystery of the Forest from Chrono Trigger and Sanctuary Forest from The Legend of Zelda. Take a listen. Since surfing and riding your bike isn't allowed in the tower, the music will not change when used outside the tower, because the area surrounding the tower is still called Dragon Spiral Tower. In Pokemon White, when you near the final floor, you can hear N shouting, Burn Baby Burn, a reference to the song Disco Inferno. However, in the Japanese version of Pokemon White, N does not speak, and all that is heard is Reshiram's cry. Fact number 4, Pokemon Contests. In the Japanese versions of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and their remakes, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the contest ranks are named after the types of the original Gen 1 Pokeballs, Normal, Great, Ultra, and Master. However, this reference was missed by the translation teams in both the originals and their remakes, with the names of the English ranks instead being replaced with the names of potions, Normal, Super, Hyper, and Master. Interestingly, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl actually corrected this in the English games, keeping the Japanese names of the ranks. The move Struggle is programmed to have stats for contests, with an appeal of 4 in Ruby and Sapphire and an appeal of 3 in Diamond and Pearl. This is done in case someone found a way to hack Struggle into contests and to keep the game from crashing. Fact number 5, Deonsi and the Cocoon of Destruction. In the Japanese airing of Deonsi and the Cocoon of Destruction, Ash's Halucha makes an appearance in the introduction scenes, even though Ash hadn't caught Halucha yet in the Japanese XY episodes. Also, had the 24th X and Y episode not been delayed, Ash's Fletchender would have still been a fledgling at the time this movie premiered. This movie marks the first time in exactly six years that Ash encounters Team Rocket within a movie. The last movie that Ash saw Team Rocket in was Giratina and the Sky Warrior, which premiered on July 19th, the same day in Japan as Deonsi and the Cocoon of Destruction. Deonsi and the Cocoon of Destruction is the first Pokemon movie since Mewtwo Strikes Back to get a completely new soundtrack made for the dub. Almost all the original Japanese music is removed. This is also the only movie to edit out the opening theme song. However, this was only in the first airing of the movie on Cartoon Network. Written lyrics exist for the full version of Pokemon theme song in this movie. Thanks for watching Pokemon Facts and Trivia. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like. If you're new, you can subscribe to see more videos like this. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.